Scientists create diamonds at room temperature for the first time. SpaceX sends first full team of astronauts to ISS. Solar system formed in less than 200,000 years. And Blue Nebula mystery has finally been solved. Welcome to the What the Facts channel. This is Science News Summary, where we will cover the most interesting news about everything science related that happens during the last week. Our topics range from medicine, neurology, and biology to physics, technology, and space. So if you've had enough negativity in the press and you're looking for some uplifting news, then this show is just for you. Let's get started. In nature, diamonds form deep in the earth over billions of years. This process requires environments with exceptionally high pressure and temperatures exceeding 1000 degrees Celsius. Now, scientists in Australia say they have sped up the process into just a matter of minutes and at room temperature. This latest breakthrough was led by scientists at the Australian National University and RMIT University, who used what's known as a diamond anvil cell, which is a device used by researchers to generate the extreme pressures needed to create ultra-hard materials. The team applied pressure equal to 640 African elephants on the tip of a ballet shoe, doing so in a way that caused an unexpected reaction among the carbon atoms in the device. University professor Jody Bradby explains, the twist in the story is how we apply the pressure, as well as very high pressures, we allow the carbon to also experience something called shear, which is like a twisting or sliding force. We think this allows the carbon atoms to move into place and form lonsdalite and regular diamonds. The researchers also explained that they were able to create two types of structurally distinct diamonds, one similar to those typically worn in jewelry, and another type called lonsdalite, which is found naturally at the site of meteorite impacts and is harder than most diamonds. Synthetic diamonds are not themselves new and have already been created in labs since the 1940s in a bid to find cheaper, ethical, and environmentally friendly stones. But researchers were excited to create such diamonds at room temperature, especially the harder Lonsdalite diamond, which has the potential to be used to cut through ultra-solid materials on mining sites. Great whites are a big draw in Cape Town, with visitors viewing them from tour boats or protective shark cages, but their numbers have been in steep decline since at least 2017. The vanishing of great whites from the coastal sites False Bay had previously been blamed on illegal hunting and overfishing, among other causes. But the results of a study conducted by a government-appointed team of nine local and international experts suggest that the orcas, also known as killer whales, could be the culprits after a pair of killer whales was first sighted in the area in 2015. The number of great whites in the area is not known, but spotters initially reported steep declines in 2017, then an extended absence. Also, the remains of five great white sharks killed by orcas were discovered in the Ganzibai area in 2017. Orcas have been observed preying on great white sharks all over the world. When confronted by them, the sharks will immediately vacate their hunting ground and stay away for up to a year, according to a 2019 study published in Scientific Reports. The increased presence of these shark specialist killer whales may explain why white sharks have remained absent in False Bay, added the report. Four astronauts were successfully launched on the SpaceX Crew Dragon Resilience to the International Space Station, the first of what the U.S. hopes will be many routine missions following a successful test flight in late spring. NASA astronauts Victor Glover and Shannon Walker, along with the JAXA astronaut Soichi Noguchi, joined Commander Hopkins aboard Dragon, thus ending almost a decade of international reliance on Russia for rides on its Soyuz rockets. The crew docked at their destination at 11 p.m. Monday night, joining two Russians and one American on board the station, and will stay for six months. Hopkins explained during a pre-flight briefing November 9th that the space station might be a little cramped after Crew 1's arrival. Currently, there is a shortage of sleeping pods on the space station. That's because historically, ISS crew size has been six, and the arrival of Crew 1 will bring the orbiting lab's population to seven. According to Hopkins, he will sleep in the Dragon until another sleeping pod arrives at the space station, which could arrive mid-mission or after the Crew-1 team returns to Earth. There may be a shortage of sleeping pods, but by sending a crew of four astronauts, it will increase the amount of research carried out on the space station. SpaceX plans to reuse the booster in Crew-1 mission on its next crewed flight, which is scheduled to launch sometime in the spring of 2021. Based on isotope analysis of meteorites, a team of scientists at the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory has determined that about 4.5 billion years ago, our solar system may have formed in less than 200,000 years. 
It was thought that the formation of the solar system was a very gradual process, taking over two million years as the Sun and the planets coalesced out of a great disk of gas and cosmic dust. The oldest dated solids in the solar system are calcium aluminum rich inclusions, or in short, CAI, and these samples provide a direct record of solar system formation. These micrometer to centimeter sized inclusions in meteorites formed in a high temperature environment, more than 1300 Kelvin, probably near the young Sun. They were then transported outward to the region where carbonaceous chondrite meteorites and their parent bodies formed, where they are found today. The majority of CAIs formed 4.567 billion years ago, over a period of about 40,000 to 200,000 years. Since the observed time span of stellar accretion, 1 to 2 million years, is much longer than CAIs took to form, the team was able to pinpoint which astronomical phase in the solar system's formation was recorded by the formation of CAIs, and ultimately, how quickly the material that makes up the solar system accreted. And here is the last news update for this week. In 2004, astronomers found something really weird. Around 6200 light years away, a star was found surrounded by a ring-shaped nebula glowing in invisible ultraviolet light. There's nothing else quite like it in the Milky Way galaxy, making it difficult to figure out how and why the object, named the Blue Ring Nebula, got that way. We now finally have an answer that works. The complex structures around the star, named TYC 25977351, are the result of two stars merging. It turns out this star was once a binary system. Less than 5,000 years ago, the two stars mooshed together to become one. The nebula comprises gas and debris ejected during the violent event. According to the astronomers, it is one of the youngest such merged binaries we have found yet, constituting a sort of Goldilocks-style missing link in the story of stellar binary mergers. But we have only seen one such local merger in action. In the Milky Way, the most recent stellar merger was observed in 2008, but it was the first such event in known recorded history. The Blue Ring Nebula could be the next youngest. For any two stars on a mutual orbit, there's a strong possibility that, as their orbit loses energy, it decays, causing them to spiral towards each other and eventually collide. The stellar collision ejected a cloud of hot debris into space. As the debris flew outward, it created a shockwave that, in turn, heated up hydrogen molecules in the debris cloud, producing the ultraviolet emissions scientists first observed back in 2004. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope that you enjoyed hearing some positive news. If you did and you want to support this channel, please share this video with your friends or consider hitting the subscribe button. This is Alex, the voice of the What The Fact channel. That's all for today's episode, so stay curious and see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.